Bet you never thought you'd see Superman versus Pinhead in your lifetime, did you? So Hellraiser Hellworld tells the story of a group of teens that gather in a rave to find out how an online role-playing game ties into the Cenobite mythos. Welcome back everybody to another Hellraiser review and we are at the ninth film in the Hellraiser franchise. The light at the end of the tunnel is within distance. We're almost there everybody. We're almost there, bear with me. So Hellraiser Hellworld is a movie that I have never seen before. If you've seen my previous reviews and I have reviewed every film previous to this in the franchise just over the past week or so, Everything after Hellraiser Bloodline, with the exception of Judgment, which is next, I've never seen before. Hellraiser Hellworld was one of the ones that everybody always seemed to hate the most, and I wasn't quite sure what it was. All I knew about this was the cover of the DVD or the Blu-ray where it looks almost like Hellraiser Matrix, where it's going to be something digital, something meta, something a little bit more modern. I, I really have no idea. I had no idea what to expect story-wise from this, so popping this in... Just like a lot of movies in this franchise, my expectations were pretty low. But I gotta be honest, I might upset a few of you Hellraiser diehards because for this being one of the most hated entries in this franchise from what I can tell, I had an okay time with it. So starting off with the positives for Hellraiser Hellworld, I liked the fun, modern, almost meta approach to the storytelling. We've already seen this Hellraiser mythos, this Hellraiser world get explored in a bunch of different ways to an agonizing degree. I mean, we saw the very grounded horror take in the first couple of movies, then we saw a slasher approach, then we saw the seedy detective story for a while, then we went into a foreign land, and it just... There's not much left to do with this franchise, so I understand why, at the point that they were with this ninth film, why they decided to take more of a, call it Trashy's 2000s slasher approach to this. The story approach and the vibe of this movie could very easily be compared to Halloween Resurrection, not in the worst ways, there's no Busta Rhymes characters, there's no you know, kicking Pinhead in the face with karate kicks or anything like that, but just taking a modern approach to getting a bunch of young, hot stars together and then putting them in a situation where Pinhead can take them out one by one, it's kind of a similar approach to that. And I understand why some people might not like that, and I certainly have a lot of negatives towards that that I'll get into here in a little bit, but I feel like this was a more watchable film than the previous handful of them. I mean, the, so many of them were just so dark and bleak and repetitive that especially watching them back to back, it just got so tiresome to where it was miserable getting through them. There's much more miserable films as far as just bad quality. There's worse films that I've watched. Hell, the Wrong Turn franchise I just did earlier this year is what, like six movies? That was harder to get through than the 11 of this franchise, but being in such a repetitive state movie after movie after movie, I probably will take this trashy 2000s cheap slasher over a lot of the dark, bleak, seedy detective stories that we've gotten for the past couple movies. I mean, you have all these hot young stars and they're brought together. You got a very early Henry Cavill here, which is cool to see. And they're all friends and fans of this online role-playing game called Hell World, which is themed after the Cenobites and the Lament configuration and all of that. And eventually it leads them to this party led by Lance Henriksen, which, fun fact, he was actually in the running to play Frank in the original movie, but he passed on it to play the lead role in Near Dark. So, I prefer <laughs> Near Dark, but very cool that he actually comes back to this franchise once again. Yeah, this is made out of human skin. There's no texture quite like it. Wow. But he comes to this rave and he, he hosts all of these young kids that are fans of this game and slowly they start getting picked off in this crazy mansion house and that's just something that's more entertaining for me. I, I can shut my brain off and have a little bit more fun with this than trekking through what we just trekked through the past three or four installments. And it did help that I found the cast to be mildly entertaining here, especially a young Henry Cavill. He's kind of like this hornball douchebag here, and it's cool to see him in an early role like that when he grew up to be the most positive and hopeful superhero of all time in Superman. So I enjoyed seeing him. I always love seeing Lance Henriksen. He's kind of like... Uh, James Remar that I was talking about a couple movies ago to where any movie that he shows up in, I automatically perk up a little bit. He always adds something. Even if he's in a bad movie, he's not the reason why, and he's one of the better elements. So a lot of the cast here is 2000s horror cliches. There's nothing here that's going to stand out. There's no character here that you would love to see again or that you regret that they die in this movie. But again, for that 
trashy early 2000s slasher approach, I'm okay with that. I can have fun with that. And this movie does have a lot more fun with its concept and with its kills and with its villain than most, if not all, of the other Hellraiser movies. One of the reasons why this franchise is so hard to get through when you watch it all is because it's all so dark and bleak and just depressing. I mean, if you want a fucked up horror movie, go watch the original Hellraiser. It will fill that void. But when you watch 9, 10, 11 of these movies back to back and there's no fun to be had aside from moments in Hellraiser 3, I appreciate when you get to a movie like this that doesn't treat itself so seriously. It doesn't really treat it like it's this dark, brooding horror masterpiece. It's just trying to have a little bit of fun. And finally, there is some decent gore here. There's some good practical effects. There's a little bit of CGI here, not nearly as egregious as the past couple of them, but you have a little bit more of a saw flavor to the horror, which again is kind of just the air that this movie came out in. That was the craze that was going on with saw and hostile and torture porn and all of that. So. Hellraiser does take a little bit of influence from those types of movies with its kills and with its gore. And for the most part, it's all pulled off pretty well. Now moving on to the negatives. Now, as much as I defended this movie in the first part of this review, make no mistake, this is not a good movie. This is not a, a great classic. This is not some underrated sequel in here. It's just a movie that I think I can have a little bit more fun with than it seems a lot of you did. But one thing I will absolutely agree on is that despite this being a mildly enjoyable 2000s slasher horror film, it is a god-awful Hellraiser movie. Like, for all of the sequels that we've been through over the past couple of days that started out as one thing and then got molded and morphed into a Hellraiser movie, this one does the most piss-poor job at actually making it feel like a Hellraiser movie. This literally feels like a movie that was just this generic spec script that they threw pen Pinhead in. And I've said that time and time again over the past couple of days, but this is absolutely the most egregious. You could take Pinhead out of this movie completely and just have Lance Henriksen be this crazy old guy killer, and the movie would almost work better for that, to be honest with you. I didn't like the fact that as much of a modern meta approach they take to this Hell World game, there's never really much explanation to how this Hell World game came about, why it's themed after the Cenobites, how does the creator of the game even know about the Cenobites, all of that is just kind of left as this lingering question. And for a movie that's taking this modern meta approach, you have to have some explanation there. I think that that was a giant missing chunk of the story of this movie that definitely could have made the third act itself come together a little bit cleaner as well. And it certainly doesn't help that every single time that Pinhead shows up in this movie, it is just so lazy, it is so tired. I mean, it's no question whatsoever why this was and probably is the last performance that you'll ever see with Doug Bradley as Pinhead because even in this movie, he's just like, guys, again with this shit, like, fuck, you've destroyed this character, but fine, put the fucking makeup on, I'll do my best. What's the line? Line? That's the line? Ugh, fuck it. Okay. As a rock and metal fan, it is annoying how generic, like, royalty-free music style that the soundtrack of this film is. Like, throughout the rave and everything, there's just this stock generic rock soundtrack going throughout the entire movie. Like, that's something that can help a movie is nostalgia for that era's music. You could have had some Disturbed or some Godsmack or something from that era in here, but clearly they weren't working with a whole lot with the budget, so they just like went on to <laughs> some music maker program and had this drum and guitar loop back and forth, and they just play it throughout this film, and it, it fucking was like a cheese grater to my ass. I just could not stand that loop over and over and over again when they could have put a couple of dollars into a soundtrack. And finally, I did not like the conclusion of this movie. I think that on paper there was something interesting that they were going for, which again is kind of ruined because they made this a Hellraiser film to where if they had just kept Pinhead out of this and made this a movie where Lance Henriksen in like a mask or something or in some kind of a fucked up getup was going around and torturing these kids throughout the movie, this actually would be pretty decent. But the ending that they come up with to where it's all a dream, it was all hallucinations, and Lance Henriksen is actually the killer and buried them all in this fucking crypt for revenge on this event that happens at the beginning of the film, that's a cool twist, but the way that they execute it is just bland and tired, especially when you're here for a Hellraiser film and you find out that Pinhead was never even really a part of what was going on. All the garbage Pinhead scenes that you just suffered through were a dream all along anyway. It's like, God damn, dude, really? <laughs> that's, 
that, that's too much. And then just shoehorning the reality of the Cenobites in the final scene where Lance Henriksen actually opens up the real Lament configuration. That that feels like a tacked on post credit scene at that point to where it's just like, guys, you, we've all left the theater at this point. Stop trying. This is not happening. See, is believing. I should have come for you. So all in all, guys, not a good movie, not a movie that I probably will ever rewatch again. But if I had to rewatch the Hellraiser franchise for whatever reason, this is one of the sequels that I would not dread getting back to. It was OK. It was a decent time for somebody that grew up in the era of slashers of this genre and slashers of this style and this approach. This was palatable for me. I could get through it just fine. As a Hellraiser movie, it's fucking embarrassing. As a horror movie itself, it was fine. So if you're a Hellraiser fan, you might not find what you want here, but if you are a slasher fan, if you did grow up with 2000s horror flicks, there might be some stylistic approaches and some cliches of that era that you will have fun with here. So not a terrible watch, but certainly not one that you need to rush out to or add to your collection. Just check it out online and stream it. So what do you guys think of Hellraiser Hellworld? Are you the camp that despises this because it's not a Hellraiser movie whatsoever? Or are you somebody that can look past that and just have an okay time with a generic trashy slasher? Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. And what do you expect from Hellraiser Revelations? Because I'm actually about to go watch that right now. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you are a fan of the Hellraiser franchise. I've reviewed all nine movies up to this point in full detail. You can check out that backlog of material. I also have Revelations and Judgment coming up tomorrow and the next day, and this Saturday we're going to rank the entire Hellraiser franchise. So please hit that subscribe button so you do not miss out on any of that pain and pleasure. Thank you for watching as always, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.